Good morning everybody. Today we are starting off by hauling some bales of straw from the one side of our farm to the other side of the farm. Basically we put all the bales on the south side of our farm because we use them for bedding and we want them close to the corrals. And we got some canola bales and some wheat bales. And we want to feed some of the wheat bales to the corrals here. We mix a little bit in with the TMR. So I got to bring some, some wheat bales, some wheat straw to the other side of our farm. Basically we want it there because the guy is going to come. He's going to custom tub grind it. Basically the guy puts this bale through his machine, grinds it up onto a nice pile, and then we can really easily mix it through the feed wagon with the silage and the other stuff we want to put in there, TMR. Just waiting for Buddy to rip through the feedlot here while he's dumping that feed wagon, and then we're gonna grab a couple of bales. This is where all the straw is kept for the bedding, but there's six rows of wheat straw here, and these are the ones we're gonna grab. some bales over there and then some bales by the feed type of deal uh, they end up being everywhere and it kind of looks messy around the farm that's why we just put them there but it does chew up quite a bit of time so we'll look at it next year Right there is the last little bit of ground up straw that we have to feed. It's probably gonna last us two more days tops. This is where we're putting the bales. We're gonna try and put about 45 there or so. And then when the guy comes, he can just grab them and put them through his machine and make a nice big pile there. Good morning guys. We are on our way to the crop production show in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. This is a show that focuses mostly on crop production and equipment. We are primarily a dairy farm, but we do do quite a bit of crop farming. So it's still pretty interesting to go out to this show. Um, yeah, mostly just to look at some new equipment. Farm show was pretty cool yesterday. We got to see a ton of nice new equipment, but we're back to farm. It's the next day, 6.30 in the morning, and uh, I'm just checking out the weather right now. Right now it's minus 43 with the wind. That's not even the coldest day here in the forecast. Right here on Wednesday morning, it says minus 50. It's bound to happen out here in Saskatchewan sooner or later once we get these stupid cold temperatures but uh, you basically just have to deal with them. There's nothing you can do about it. So we're just gonna go out there, start feeding the cows, and we're also gonna check all the water bowls and all the corrals just to make sure there's still water in there instead of some ice. Out of the corrals here, we're just gonna climb into each corral and make sure that there's still water in every single water bowl. This water bowl is good here, we can see. It's got thawed water in it and um, the way these things don't freeze up is underneath on the inside of this plastic part here there's a heater element in it and then the water line goes 10 feet down that's how deep it has to be so it doesn't freeze and then it goes to the water system in that barn right there 
This water bowl is doing pretty good. It's a concrete water bowl, so I think it holds the heat onto the outside a little bit better. And that's why there's not as much ice building up on the outside. Whereas those other water bowls, the yellow ones, are plastic. The cows do pretty good outside here in the cold weather. We just gotta make sure we always put enough bedding on those straw packs. And uh, they also grow a really nice fluffy fur coat in the winter time, which keeps them warm. They're pretty big animals. They weigh about 12, 1300 pounds. So they don't struggle at all to stay warm out here. Luckily, all of the water bowls are good. It would really, really suck if we had to deal with a solid frozen water bowl right now. right now and one of them is pretty messy here um, basically the reason why we didn't take tires off this is because there's so much ice holding those tires down you almost need a crowbar to rip some of them up and uh, so it's just easier to go underneath scoop them get those tires loose and take the tires off after they've fallen down or after they've been moved so I'm just gonna try and knock some of those tires loose over there take them off by hand and then try and cut up to the silage and there's a little bit of dirt on both sides along the banks and we're just going to push that back with the loader try and clean this pit up a bit What we've done there is we've just tapped all the tires. They're all loose, so we're gonna handball them in here. And um, the biggest worry with treating a pit like this is rotten feed. You know, if you're if it's such a mess like this, your feed's gonna rot. It's gonna be low quality feed when you give it to the cows. It's gonna be a little bit moldy. But uh, we're literally standing in a deep freeze throughout the entire winter out here, so you do not have to worry at all about feed rotting. Um, it's just too cold for it to rot and um, you probably would need to use a crowbar to get some of those tires loose so it's just easier doing it this way since the tire is round and it sits on the plastic it just builds up a crap ton of ice And that's what freezes them down to the plastic. The way we cover these pits here, when they're put on the dirt like this, we just put some tires on top and then we sprinkle a dirt kind of perimeter around the bottom of the plastic just to keep it airtight. What we're gonna do now is scrape that sand up and uh, push it back to where we got those tires stacked on top. far from ideal we just finished up there um, but we just want to make sure there's no tires falling into the feed or any plastic getting mixed in there and uh, it's better now than what it was so another thing that is a problem when it gets this cold out are these doors you can see there's quite a bit of ice built up on these doors and that adds quite a bit of weight to them so it makes the door opener up there really really have to work to open these doors and each panel when it wants to crack it it's got a little bit of resistance and these doors are kind of fragile. They're not made to be covered in this much ice. So what we did was we actually hung a fan up there so we can blast some warmer air against it. And it does actually thaw them out pretty good. There's quite a bit less ice here than down there. We just adjusted the fan, tried lowering it. We're gonna try and hit the lower part of the door, maybe thaw some of that out. But what I'm going to be doing right now is trying to hack some of the ice out of these rails away. 
because there's little wheels in here and they got to run all the way up this rail here and then go up there and now uh, we just got to make sure this they're clean of ice Right here in this corner is what we're concerned about. There's quite a bit of ice built up in here. I just brought a crowbar and we're gonna hack it out. We got the ice scraped out of the rails there. Now we're just gonna pour salt underneath where the rubber lining is, just to make sure it doesn't freeze solid. And we're gonna also toss a bit of salt up into these rails. Sprinkling that little bit of salt underneath the rubber liner in between the concrete and the door, is just gonna help it ensure that it's not gonna freeze solid. There's also a heater element in here though. Um, it does a really good job of keeping it all thought out, but it's better safe than sorry. I see it in the comments, you guys love watching the calves run around, some nice fresh bedding, so uh, there you go. We have this cow here, she was down in the alley in the barn, and we think she kind of has some nerve damage. Her rear legs are kind of weak, she's kind of wobbly, and we don't want to milk her in the parlor anymore, we're scared she's going to fall down in there. So we put her here on the special needs pack for cows, and we're just going to milk her by hand because we don't want to just leave her without milking her because then the rest of her lactation, she's not gonna produce as much milk. You don't wanna let a cow produce a bunch of milk, leave her for a couple days, because then the rest of her lactation is gonna be, she's gonna produce less milk. So we're just gonna go ahead and milk her by hand right now. got her milked out there we do it once a day and uh, usually in the morning that's gonna be it for today's video guys it's kind of a video where we jumped all over the place did a bunch of small jobs but uh, I went on a vacation there got back and then I hadn't uploaded for like almost a week when I got back and then I wanted to film right away but I had a really sore throat I could barely talk so uh, these are just a bunch of clips of odd jobs that we did around the farm probably over the last two weeks but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it anyways. If you did, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram at SaskDutchKid. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.